I think we can change things. I think it's important to redefine dementia as a disability so that patients are not labelled. We retain personhood. And there's an awful lot of living well with dementia rather than prematurely dying of dementia. Dementia is a chronic condition and so it, there's a need for partnership between primary care and the memory clinic services to make sure that the quality life of everybody involved, not just the patient, but also the families who are doing the day-to-day -day caring and also all the health and social care staff who uh, become involved, um, all of them can actually work closely together and make sure that the outcome is good as it possibly can be for everybody. We should be improving our nutrition, taking regular exercise, we should be managing our stress more effectively and we should be um, identifying and treating um, depression. Um, we should be identifying hypertension, uh, diabetes. We should be advising people to stop smoking and we should be advising people to manage their stress uh, more effectively. Alzheimer's Society is very specific to dementia. Now it's called Alzheimer's Society, but uh, that doesn't mean to say that somebody with vascular dementia or Korsakoff's or any other form of dementia is not supported by the society. It absolutely is. Um, and, I mean, my wish would be that if there if there was an opportunity to even add it onto a prescription or an informal prescription to say, well, you know, you've been diagnosed with this, this is what we can treat you um, through, through medication. Um, but here's a list of organisations that will help you then understand more about the condition and give you advice and information as to what can support you to, to, to live your life. And I say this very much as a GP, that I believe that the clinical generalist is fundamental to good quality end of life care. It's our bread and butter. And I think if we get this aspect of our work right, it acts as a litmus test for all the work that we do. We began by saying that everyone's experience of dementia is different. Dementia demands that we treat patients and carers as people first. You have to try to remember that it's a different sort of person and, and you really need to be more patient. And the number of times that I've been in church and said, please God, Will you make me more patient with Jim? But so far, he hasn't done it for me. Just carry on. Take as much help as you can possibly get from every professional body that, that you possibly can. And obviously your family are very important. Making it seem nice and sugarcoating it. And then I'm really trying to emphasise this a lot and then them discovering it by themselves, as I have done. It, to me, is the wrong way of doing it. There, there, maybe there is a, t a tendency in the, in the, the caring and the health, possession, uh, health professions. You know, you're avoiding stress for yourself and you think you're helping people. You're not. There is a silver lining because I think in the last 10 years, um, with my mum, are probably some of the best times I've had in my life. And I think with my mum and dad, I think they... They were together for over 50 years and um, towards the end, you know, when, they, when my dad was caring for her, I think they probably went back to when they first met. I love going out. It, it's, it's different. But I love being in my home. And I would say to anybody who listens to what I'm saying now, please do not sit under this condition. If you sit under this condition, you will go worse. I think, uh, I sincerely think that you have to look after yourself. And although you might find it hard to let go, you have to let go. Because I knew of carers who went in every single day at the same time every day. I went every other day until about six weeks or so before he died because I knew he was dying. Then, but to go every day. You see, if you go every day and your partner dies, you, you, I mean, where do you go from there? You, you've got to get a life. You know, the funny thing was, is like with my mum, one time she said to me, oh, I'm really glad we know each other. You know, it's lovely. She said, did we meet when we were teenagers? And I say, oh no, mum, I'm your daughter. 
And then she'd go, oh, and we'd just laugh. It didn't really matter. I said, it doesn't really matter, does it? So, and then we'd just laugh about it. No, there's no question of being downhearted. Because my thought is, I've only got so many years to go, so there's no point in being downhearted. Just make the most of it, and, and that's it. Go out with a little sort of flutter. <laughs> Well, first of all, I'd like people to go away having enjoyed themselves. Um, this isn't a solemn occasion. Dementia as a subject has been rather taboo in the medical community. As, as doctors, we felt you know, helpless in the face of it. We didn't have a treatment for it. There was nothing that we could do to stem this tide of people developing dementia. But I hope people will take away a message that there are actually things in primary care we can do to prevent dementia. And it's a message that's not really been put out to us in the past. Also, I think that as teams, we have a huge amount we can do to improve the way our services are delivered for patients with dementia and their carers. And that's where the teamwork comes in. I think that when the whole team takes responsibility and starts to think about some really quite simple issues, that they can generate quite remarkable change. And that doesn't have to cost money. That's something that comes with um, internal decisions and a sense of ownership within your own practice team. So just go ahead, let's go and do it. <laughs>